today I'm going to be working on putting plow wheels, carrier wheels, I guess you could say casters, on the front plow. This is going to be on a pickup truck plow. It's a Hineker. It's a nice, nice plow. I don't have the truck in the shop right now, but I'll be taking some video of what it's got on it now. Right now it has a skid shoe. I've got a diagram and some plans drawn up here, just roughly. Right now it has a skid shoe like that. It's got a 7 8 shaft. The shoe and the shaft assembly that are on the plow right now are all one piece, so you just pull that out. It's got, they got shims, things to adjust them as they wear. I'm going to use a caster wheel like this. These are the wheels that I've found. I think these are more than enough for the weight. The main reason for doing this is the owners of the plow have to plow an area that has some, some uh, patio stone type stuff, like some brick, some decorative brickwork. And they don't want the the skid shoe, the iron skid shoe, to be leaving metal behind. You've probably seen the stains, the rust stains that, that happen on the, on the highway surface, road surface, and on concrete surfaces is really bad. So these caster wheels have uh, this plastic surface, um, neoprene surface, I believe, on them. So they're rated for a lot, a lot more weight, I think, than what this plow weighs. But the plow does come down fairly quick. So I needed something that was heavy enough that it could handle that initial impact, and then of course the, the weight of carrying the plow when the when we're plowing. So I've got a, I've got a bit of a diagram drawn up. This is it's a seven eighths inch pipe inside diameter pipe on the plow that it'll be pinned on. I've got some bar stock, so I'm going to build a pin that pins this this frame on because. Three and a half inches is the height from, from the mount down to the bottom of the skid shoe that's on it now. But these are five and a half inches like I've got written here, these casters, caster wheels. I don't want to try to make them shorter. They are what they are. I'm just going to work with that. Like I could I could try to drill this hole a little further up because there's quite a bit of clearance up there. But it's just a little bit too much work. I want to be able to take these off. I'm going to bolt them onto a plate. I want to be able to replace those if anything happens if they get damaged or wore out so hopefully these ones I'll never have to do that I think they're heavy enough but anyways that's why I don't want to start modifying those because then if I was replacing them I'd have to modify everything else you know the drill so here's what I want to build is a flat plate underneath here that will bolt to the that the caster will bolt onto and then this frame is going to hold it up I'm going to have some pipe welded to it here and some some loops here course that are just going to be made out of pipe and then this will all be welded together and braced so that it's really strong it does I mean this this with this plow and when you see it it's got a it's got a plastic mold board and stuff so it's not super heavy there's where the wheel is going to mount on the bracket like that and I've angled this a little bit down like that so that just to accommodate for the wear and the pin like that's not a a really tight fit the pin so while while they're plowing it, of course it's gonna flatten out so I want I don't want it sitting like this when they're plowing I want it to sit more flat so I've made it so it's gonna be up a little bit like that just to account for the tolerances in the in the mounting pin I'm gonna be building this out of quarter inch steel I got a few feet here four feet of quarter inch by four inch flat the reason why I did that is I can make my plate bolt my caster wheel too just like this. I'm gonna drill this out and then I'm gonna flip it over. I don't even have to flip it over but anyways I'm gonna then I'm gonna start building my templates here. Hopefully the truck will be back here fairly soon and I can get some more measurements off of that. Maybe I'll get a little bit of film of what the mount looks like. I'm gonna anyways sooner or later. But I just need to find out a little bit of what my clearance is here where the mount is. I forgot to do that when I had the truck in earlier, so I've got to kind of draw where I'm going to put the pipe, how, how long this pipe is that comes off, because I'm going to have to have a loop at the top and a loop at the bottom that's tied into this, and it's going to pin on there. So hopefully this works good. Hineker doesn't build a, a, a wheel, or else I would have just ordered a caster wheel for the plow that exists. I phoned them, and they said it just they just haven't done it. It's There's a lot of engineering and stuff like that involved. And it's not something that there's a real demand for, so I'm just going to build my own. This should be shouldn't be too expensive to do, and should, I, if it's strong enough, I think it'll work really well on this plow. 
So I'm just going to do this with a piece of soapstone. I'm just marking out my holes there. Got them all marked. I'm going to use these ones because there's a little bit of adjustment there, which I probably won't be using. But uh, you could you could use this hole here, but there's not much clearance there. I don't even know if that if that is a mounting hole and just use two bolts. But I'm going to use the four bolts anyways. Then I'm just going to punch center punch these and drill them. So center punch works good, but if you've got them a transfer punch set like this, if you're doing fabrication, of course, it's really nice to have these just to keep your holes perfectly centered in there and then when you bolt it up with your bolts if you're using if you're not I'm not going to give a bunch of tolerance on here I want to use a bolt that's pretty snug so I don't have to worry about the that mount moving around when he's working because these things vibrate so much when they're working you have to lock tight or use a stove or lock nut I'll be using a lock lock nut on these on these bolts because it just the plow vibrates constantly and shakes everything loose so I'm gonna before I drill them though, I'm just going to take this, line it up with a little bit of clearance there, cut, cut both my squares, top one's marked, I'm going to mark this one, I'm going to do my center punches on that, cut this off, cut, do two cuts here with the zip cut, and then I'm going to weld those, tack weld those together and drill them both in the drill press. So I'm going to get started. Turns out that 7 16 is my hole size here, my bolt size, so it fits, fits quite snug in there. I don't want it too snug, but I don't want it too loose either. So, there we have it. Put the bolt in there. There's no interference until you do that. Anyway, so. Both my plates are done. I'm ready to start cutting and building brackets. Okay, here's the plow in front of an F250. It's a nice plow. It's a, I like this plow because it's got a trip edge on it. It's a poly mold board. Uh, here's the skid shoes that are on it, and you can just. It's not the greatest shim system. There's some washers up here, there's some spacers, pipe spacers, and whatnot. So there's the skid shoe that's currently on the plow. So what I need to do is get this measurement right here. Three and a quarter. Okay. So I've got everything else pretty much that I need. So all I'm going to do is build a, a mount so that that caster wheel can it'll have to be up a little bit higher, be a couple inches higher than this gives you, but I'm just going to build a mount that hooks on here with a pipe. So I could have got a bolt, but I probably would have had to order it, and who knows how long away will way that would be, how far away. It's been taking a long time to get parts, so the caster shoe will kind of be mounted up here and then it'll have one loop down here as well. Okay, big change of plans here. Instead of trying to build a caster mount here, I'd have to move everything up so much to accommodate for the wheel, because the wheel's so much taller than the skid shoe, as you can see here. It hangs down quite a bit lower than the skid shoe. So that way I'd have to build something that would bring it up, but then I'd need where those spacers are, a couple inches of spacers, to be able to lower it and adjust it to account for cutting edge wear. You see how deep the cutting edge is on this. So as the cutting edge wears, you need to be able to raise up your wheel to allow correct distance for cutting edge, of course. And to do that and have a, have a mount built here, what would end up happening is the mount would have, have to hang down so low here 
that it would almost be touching the ground and the wheel would be slightly lower than that. I just didn't really like that. It's a lot of work too, a lot of fabrication. So instead what I'm going to do is mount this pipe up here. This bar right here is going to raise it up enough to accommodate for the height of the wheel. Put a one inch piece of round stock down through there and then the wheel mount will be on the end of that. So I'll be able to raise that up and lower it to account for cutting edge wear, cutting edge depth. So quite a big revision on my plan. I'm going to also have to weld a gusset in here. Put a piece in there to make it stronger but when she's all done and those wheels are on it, it's going to be a lot nicer of a setup than in the skid shoes now, especially for doing the uh, concrete and not staining that. So. All right. on there. I just got the plow sitting on the skid shoe now. So the caster wheel isn't, isn't taking the weight. I'll leave that up and down. That's what I ended up with. The mount I believe is going to be plenty strong enough. The only thing I'm worried about is right now is how long this one inch shaft sticks through there. Even though it's going to it's not going to be super easy to bend that. I might just I should have dropped this pipe through the mount a little bit. Just so I got about two inches here, I only need about two inches of adjustment to account for the wear on the cutting edge and then it'll be worn out. And it won't wear, it'll last forever with, with these wheels because the wheel's not going to wear down and let the cutting edge touch the, uh, the ground. Huh. So, that's what I got to deal with now. I'm going to get these mounts welded on and then I'm going to set my angle here. I'm going to have to angle it a little bit further forward because you can see how the pipe just lets that piece of brown stock move back a little bit and it could theoretically go right up inside that mount but you'd never have to lift it that high unless you wanted to just use skid shoes instead of wheels and then I could maybe I'll put an extra pinhole in the in the top here so that I can just lift them out of the way in the case that you could swap them out for skid shoes. Skid shoes are just going to come off and go in the toolbox of this truck or something or in the back seat. So this will be able to swivel, but it doesn't matter because it's a caster wheel. So I think that's what I, the only thing I'm going to do is maybe add a little bit more pipe here. Maybe I'll try and find something that's a little more heavy wall. And then if there's only about two inches exposed of this bar stock, I think that'll be fine. Or I could gusset this. Might do that. Well, then it's going to put more leverage on the top and it'll just bend up here. And then you won't be able to lift it in and out. So if it bends, it'd be better for it to bend at the bottom. Then you could just straighten it or whatever. Okay. And then on the top, it'll just be like this. I'm just going to put a hitch pin in there. And it can ride against a couple shims that are on top of the post. So it's a little bit taller. But it's not in the way of anything. I don't think it'll contact the bumper. I'm going to have to check that right away before I get too far along with the truck. I think that's going to work pretty good once it's all, once I got it all welded in there. All right, better get back. Here's what I ended up doing. <clears throat> Here's the, the post of the plow. So I had to gusset that a little bit. It definitely would, would bend, would hit something. However, at least with the plow wheel, if it does hit something, it should roll over, lift up and roll over, instead of getting hooked and bending the post. Anyway, so just one inch bar stock. I'm going to have to drill my hole in it this morning and paint this up. Truck's out, but when the truck comes back, I'll show what it looks like on the plow and hopefully these things hold up. I think that the weight rating on these wheels is more than enough to hold the plow up. And it's just when they start plowing with it and hitting who knows what on the road, that'll be the real test.
But anyways, right now I'm pretty happy with the way this looks, and I think here's what I ended up with. Good. Got them on the truck. They're mounted a little bit higher than what the skid shoes would be mounted at. The reason why they had to be mounted a little bit higher is to clear the, the frame of the plow in there. So because this bottom mount had to be square with the with the wheels to mount the wheels to it, I guess I could have trimmed that a little bit more and welded it together, but I, I wanted to just make the bolt-on wheels in case I got to change a caster at some point. Or the post, if the post gets bent too. I'm hoping that the post will be okay. If you look at how much of the skid shoe would hang down to have it at the same height, and those things never got bent, so I think that this post will be okay, even though it's a little longer than what I would have liked to have it. Not. Anyway, so that's, that's what I ended up doing to mount the wheels on this plow. I would have liked to be able to mount the wheels here and just be able to swap out the skid shoes, but really for the extra bit of fabrication, it's the same difference. I mean, if the operator wants to take the wheels off and put the skid shoes back on, and lift the plow up and do that, you just got you just end up with an extra mount up here. So the, just the height of the wheel is is what was what made it uh, necessary to to put that extra mount in the top there. So that's what I ended up doing. I've got the plow set just a little bit higher. Front plow should be just not quite touching the ground so the cutting edge doesn't wear out so quick. And also just the way they're designed, front, that's what a front plow is for, is not a lot of down pressure. It's just to clear snow. If you leave that quarter inch or whatever behind, that's fine. So I'm going to let him take it out and see what he, what he thinks. If not, if he wants it lower, unfortunately I'm going to have to cut some spacers because there's just the way I've got it set up in there. It's gonna, it's gonna be tough to. It's, it only goes in like one inch in increments with the. Those are the factory hip spacers there for the skid shoes that I just reuse on the uh, on the wheels. So anyway, that's where I'm gonna leave it. See what happens. Hopefully they don't get bent or anything. I, I think they'll be fine when I look at the way the skid shoe is mounted. Some really nice snow plow. It's been working really good. It's amazing the amount of, of snow this thing will push and how high you can pile banks up. It's just it's just a really nice unit, so should be even better now that it's got 